Hello again. Welcome back to the Lady Leoden's Learning Library. Today we're going to make a game. We are going to travel to ancient Egypt this time. We're going to be making a game that was found in some um, ancient Egypt, ancient Egyptian tombs. It is called Sinnet. It's actually a relatively easy game to make and a really easy game to play, but tough to master. Kind of like some other games we know. We're going to make not a board. Well, not on a board. We're going to make a take along game. And to do that, we're going to need some supplies, aren't we? The rules for this game and setup are in the supplies list that you can find below. And you can learn how to play, play it, because it's actually pretty easy to learn. So, get your scissors ready. And let's get started. So the first things you're going to need is you're going to need a needle, one that's got a large eye and is pointy on the tip, nice and sharp. You're going to need a piece, uh, a very thin piece of leather. Um, I found this at my local hobby store. It actually comes this width. It's that roll up vinyl, uh, or it, it comes in a, a strip of, it's a strip of vinyl that, that's uh, I think seven by 24 inches, like leather ribbon, basically. And like the one I'm working on, I actually, you can either fold it up and then just start sewing, you know, up the sides like that, or you can do like I did and cut it and sew it all on just like that. For this, we're going to actually be using what's called a blanket stitch. You see how on the edges like that, it's got that thread running across like you see on blankets. So you want to, this will make the pouch to hold your pieces. We have 10 of these guys for our, our, our pieces. We're going to paint them two different colors. I chose, since this is an ancient Egyptian game, I chose blue and I chose red because those were uh, the popular colors um, in ancient Egyptian paintings. Uh, they symbolize lapis and uh, carnelian. You're also going to need either popsicle sticks or little flat discs. I chose little flat discs because what you're going to do is you're going to, you know, use them kind of like dice. So you go like that and however they land, if they land one side up or the other. Now we're going to paint one side. We're going to paint one side with uh, either blue or red and then leave the other side wood. And in, in the uh, rules for the game, it'll show you how that, uh, how that works. So, and then what we're going to do is we're going to um, use paint pens. I'm going to draw the, um, the board in a silver paint pen. And then there are special spaces on the board that I will make Egyptian symbols out of in gold. And to 
to keep our pieces from falling out, we have some leather strips or leather lacing that we're going to use. You want to cut two pieces about, let's see, how long did I cut those? I cut those about nine inches because what we're going to do is we're going to poke holes in our strips right here in our, um, in our pouch all the way through to the other side and we're going to thread those through. That way you can tie it up and make sure that your pieces don't escape. And then the rest of it is going to be used to roll it up just like that and you'll have that you can attach that to the end. We'll do it kind of like that. And then that way, you have your very own game scroll. So, let's get started here. Now we're going to use the one that I've started on. This one here. And I'll finish all of that in a little in a little bit let me show you how to do that blanket stitch so you're going and what I'm using is a waxed cotton thread and I cut about three yards of it I don't know if that's how much I need or if I need more but so you poke it through. That's why you need the pointy tip. Okay. And you want them kind of evenly spaced. You're gonna, and then you're gonna pull it through till you've got a little loop, just like that. And then you're going to go through the front side of that loop. Pull it through, just like that, and that makes your blanket stitch. Let's try it again. You want about maybe a half an inch, poke it through. If you've got a mat like this, you can use that as a thimble to a degree to help push it through. Make your loop. Make sure it's nice and straight. And then you're going to come through the front side of that loop. Yikes. Just like that. And then pull it tight. Just like that. You want to see that again? All right. Poke it through like that. Pull it till you've got the loop. Thread, put, pull the thread through that loop, the front side. There you go, and pull it tight. And then you've got that running thread along the top. just keep threading it through just like that now once you're into a single layer it'll be a lot easier to poke it through this just gives the rest of it a finished edge okay we're coming up on a corner here if you look at my other corners just like that see how the stitching is really kind of close together that's what we're going to do to round this other corner. So I'm going to 
couple more stitches and it looks like three yards is definitely not enough because I still have a whole nother side to do so you might want four yards So four yards of thread is sometimes uh, hard to deal with. Okay, so here I am. I'm coming up to the corner here. So I want to. All the, those stitches are actually all going to be kind of in the same area. So we're going to do it just like that. To that corner just like that and that it's coming off the corner just as nicely it takes practice I've done this a few times take one stitch here to the side you're going to take a stitch just right down from the corner and come through just like we did on all of our other blanket stitches and then one that comes off to the side and just make sure that that thread comes right to that Not always easy to get it just right. But you want it to look really nice on the outside because you're going to be able to see that. And then just keep going as you would normally. So I've run out of thread. Well, I don't have enough. This is how we're going to finish it. And mom and dad, you're probably going to want to help with this because it's kind of tricky. So what we want to do is, see that the loop we went through? That top string here? the top thread. You went through from the front side. You're going to want to come through the front side again and then up through the loop it's already made. So you're making another loop and then you're going to come through the back side of that loop and make a knot. There you go. We'll trim that off. Just a little bit more. I don't need a whole lot. We'll start with that and see what we need. See how that goes. Now, with wax thread, it's easy to flatten it out and stick it through that hole. Of course, that's part of the reason why we use the uh, wax thread. Now, in order for us to get the right spacing or right look on the outside, we're going to come through like this. Mm -hmm. 
through that stitch right there. Okay, and then again, mom and dad, you're going to want to help with this. So we want it this way. We're going to make a knot. Now this is not just any old knot. This is what's called a square knot. Take your shorter string, just like that, and we're going to come right over left and wrap and pull through. You don't want to pull it too tight. And then left over right, again, wrap and pull through. That gives you a square knot, and that should hold. So that's basically us tying on. And then we're going to come up to this corner again. So we're going to do another corner. Practice makes perfect. Well, practice makes permanent, but... down from that corner. Sometimes those are going to overlap. Those stitch, those stitch marks, stitch holes. Come right up to that corner. All right, and then we're going to turn the corner. See where I'm coming up. Now you can use leather with a suede backing, you can use vinyl, you can use, you can even use cloth if you want to. I chose the vinyl ribbon just because it was a little easier to obtain and it was in the budget. And for something that I'm going to be carrying around, all right. Now we're going to turn another corner here, because this line right here, the top of our pocket, I want that to kind of look finished as well. This is going to be a little bit trickier. So we still want to come up here. Alright. Just like that. And now we're going to do the single layer. I know it's hard to see because I'm working black on black. So the pocket, we're going to single layer, not double. Just going to come up here. And then 
work our way down this way. You see that line? done. Couple more stitches. Take a stitch on the outside right here. Pull it up just like that. Finish it off. And then we're going to come up through that outside just like we did up, up top. Just like that. And then Around the back side, around the back side, and pull tight. And we have a cap. Okay, we can cut that off now. We're gonna stick that in there so it doesn't get lost. Extra string over here. Let's cut off now. All right. So now we have our lovely little pouch here at the end. Now you don't necessarily have to have these, but it makes it easier to hold things in place. to take my hole punch tool and let's see I want to fold it in about that far okay, I'm do it this way yeah. let's see I want to get it folded just like that all the way through. See, that'll give you two holes. There we go. And then we're going to put, gonna center it right up top here. Just like that. So pull our icing through. Just like that. One side to be shorter, just a little bit. At least twice on that. Now, now these should fit through. If your lacing is thin enough, it should fit through your. Uh, Okay, it's not going to do that. 
there are other ways to do this. You can do it in single layer. Of course, now that the hole has been punched, you need to make it a little bit bigger. Moms and dads, you're going to want to help with this. Because this can be fiddly. Cats and leather lacing. Cats and lacing. Thank you for your help, my smart. Once you have the hole punched, you can probably use a yarn needle. To get it through, I just don't happen to have one handy. Even I struggle with stuff. Yay, we got through. So, now that we've got our ties in place, that creates our pouch for our pieces. Next thing we're going to do, as you can see on this example, is we're going to create our game board. And it's a 3 by 10 1 inch squares and they're all numbered 1 through 30. And there's three special spots on the board with an Ankh, an O, and the uh, Egyptian hieroglyph for water. There's also one, two, and three. So that's what we're going to do on our other piece. So this is a piece I haven't started yet. This may be to put in somebody's gift basket, but we're going to measure out to see where we need to be. It looks like it measures about seven and a half, so I need my silver paint pen. Now you can do this with a paint pen or you can do it with a uh, so seven and a half so half of seven and a half would be three and a quarter and then See. Let's look at this other one. Where should we mark that? 
looks like that is about two and an eighth, two and an eighth from the outside edge. So we'll mark it two and an eighth. that down from the top. That is about one and an eight. So and it's going to end up being three inches by ten inches in total. Ten inches. I'm going to use that and go across three inches. bottom Sure did. Good job, me. Fortunately, that was easily fixable. Okay, then you're going to create one inch squares all the way up. Or all the way down, depending. Okay, 
that's not quite perfect, but that's okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our gold paint pen, shake it up. Now you can use regular, just regular old paint if you want. I just think it's easier to use a pen. And then you're going to number each of your squares 1 through 30. Square number 15 is where we're going to put the onk. Just like that. Onks are pretty easy. They look kind of like a hand mirror. Okay, now 26 tw and 27 both have symbols in them. 26 has the 0, and 27 has the hieroglyph for water. And then 28 has one fat line, 29 has two fat lines, and 30 has three fat lines. Just like that. So we're going to put this aside and then we're going to work on our on our pieces. Now you can see the ones that I've already done. You need ten people. Now because this is an ancient Egyptian game I chose the colors red and blue for the colors that you often see in ancient Egyptian paintings, red for carnelian and blue for lapis. You could use gemstones for your pieces. You could use the little glass beads. Um, you can use people. You can even use discs like this and just paint them whatever color you want. Um, So what you'll do is you'll pick two colors, red or blue or, you know, whatever color you would like. And what I did is I just painted the tops of them. I didn't paint the rest of them. And then for, these are like your dies, like a, like, like a pair of dice, only you've got four of them and they're only colored on one side. So. However many of the dark side, which would be your colored side, however many of those is, um, it, the rules tell you how many, how many moves you get for that. And then when you land on one of the special spaces, that, uh, the rules change a little bit, I believe. Now that we have our pieces made, and our game board made, 
we can put our pieces in just like that. Tuck everything, make sure everything's tucked inside. I'm going to tie it up. It doesn't have to be real tight. Just tie it up like that. Just like that. And roll it up. Just like that. Put it in your pouch and you're ready to go. I hope you've enjoyed this time with me today. We'll see you next time.